Hi, welcome to Reflections. This is a 15-minute broadcast that's designed to encourage you and to challenge you. And it's very difficult times that we find ourselves alive, you know, with the COVID-19 virus, with the country being on lockdown, uh, with all kinds of strange things going on in this time. And so I, I want to share with you just a, a brief message today. Um, and I'll tell you how I got here. It was on the 21st of March, a couple of weeks ago, Saturday night. I was heading down to St. Stephen's Hill to get a nice rotisserie chicken. And on my way down, on my journey, I had this thought to start an online uh, service um, and call it, you know, online church with Pastor D or something like that. Anyway, I dismissed the thought. It was just a fleeting thought. And I said, OK, fine. Um, I got the chicken and on my way back home, coming up the highway, I got a phone call on myself from none other than Patrick Crony. Some of you know Patrick Crony, the guy who was on fire for the Lord, loves the law with all of his heart. And he was really excited. He said, DD, man, you, you gotta you gotta start something online. You gotta start something online. He just led three men to the Lord and I want somewhere to send them tomorrow. Uh, this is Saturday night, uh, heading up to 8.30. And he's telling me he wants me to start an online ministry uh, that he can send these three men to, or should I say to log into, uh, to be ministered to the next morning. I said, Pat, I, I got to be honest with you. I was coming down the road here, and I was thinking of doing the same thing. Now here you are calling me saying, you said, well, it's a done deal, and we got to do this. We got to do this. So I said, all right, I, I'm not going to do it tomorrow, but, but I'll certainly give it some very serious thought. So just a couple days ago, I get a WhatsApp message from my buddy in Canada, Mark Beckles, some of you know him as well. And Mark says, you know, Phil, you, you don't have a physical pulpit to preach from, but you can certainly go online. You have something to offer. Why don't you, you know, put it out there. Why don't you just go online and, and share, share with others what, what the Lord is doing, what the Lord is saying to you and so on. And I, I thought, okay, these two guys, uh, two guys I have full respect for, I trust them. Uh, they have no connection with each other, but both are telling me what is already in, in my heart that I need to do. So this is just a 15-minute message. This is the first time I'm doing this. Um, but what I'm going to do is Good Friday, just a couple of days from today. Uh, I want to share a full message with you that will be spiritual but practical at the same time. Um, I believe that the more spiritual you are, the more practical you should be, that the spiritual and the practical should not be divorced, but they certainly should be together. Jesus was a very practical person, but he was also a very spiritual person. So here I am today, and I, I want to share with you on Good Friday, probably 8 o'clock in the morning. This is the first time I'm doing this, so probably 8 o'clock in the morning I want to share a message with you, full message, and um, look for me, either Facebook Live or a watch party or something, but look for me, you'll find me. On Good Friday at 8 o'clock in the morning. So what I want to share with you today is, is, is coming again from my experience, but something that I believe will, will strengthen and encourage you uh, and be a blessing to you in, in many ways. The word on everyone's lips right now is COVID-19. The last time I ministered at uh, Charnock Pentecostal Church, which is up by the airport, this was March 1st. Uh, the Lord led me that morning to share a message entitled, In the Last Days. Now, COVID-19, or should I say coronavirus, was up at the time, but certainly it was nowhere near Barbados. But I share this message regarding the last days. And I took my text, or should I say my start-off text, from Luke's Gospel, chapter 21. And I'm going to read a couple of verses for you from verse 25 to 28. And I'll share with you what my, my, my main message was taken from, what part of those verses. And it said, and there shall be signs in the sun, talking about the last days, right? There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And verse 26 says, men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And as men become afraid because of the things that they're seeing happening in the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up 
and lift your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And I began with that, and I said, I want to begin to focus on this, this phrase that says, men's hearts failing them for fear. Now, I've heard many people say that the thing that drives this coronavirus that is apparently more deadly than the virus itself is fear. And it seems that there's a, a spirit that is driving um, this, this whole pandemic. And I'm not quite sure where it has come from. In other words, whether it is through um, just the natural fear of the unknown, the unseen, uh, we've never had this as a novel coronavirus. It's a new virus. We've never had this before. Or if it has come through media, uh, come through what maybe governments have said or, you know, what has happened in China. I don't know where the fear comes from, but I know that the fear is very real and it's affecting many people's lives. Men's hearts failing them for fear in the last day, days, the last times that we live. And it's the, the word of God says that right there in Luke 21, when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. He didn't say when they get full blown, but when they begin to come to pass, look up. And this is so important when I think about it, because a, a, a young man that I went on a mission trip with, he was part of the team. Uh, to Moldova um, in the earlier part of 2019. Um, he's from the UK, and he sent me a message saying, you know, what, what, what is God saying or trying to do in regard to his plan through this coronavirus at the time? And I responded to him and I said, look up. God is saying to us, look up. And I want to go into this more fully, uh, hopefully on Friday. But just for the time being, I just want to say that my response, my immediate response to what is happening with this COVID-19 virus that's spreading across the world like wildfire is that God is asking us to look up because time is running out. Now, I've been saying that for a while, over a year I've been preaching and talking about time is running out. Time is short. We don't have a whole lot of time left. I'm told by the superintendent of the Assemblies of God in the Bahamas, he said, I've been sharing the same message with my pastors in the Bahamas that time is running out. And he said, do you know that there are groups on the earth today that have nothing to do with God, nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with biblical prophecy, and they are saying that time, the world is coming to an end that a world cannot continue the way it is going, it has to come to an end soon. So it seems like wherever you turn, however you look, whatever you think, it all comes to the same conclusion that we're running out of time. Time is running out. So I said to my friend, Tom, I said, Tom, we need to look up. We need to be conscious of what God is saying, what God is trying to do uh, in our lives, in the church, in the world today. So here is now my confession which is where I really want to get to, to to help and to bless some of you. You know, like when you are preparing for a hurricane, you, you batten the house down, you, you put tape on the windows, you catch water, and, you, you know, you, you buy panic buying, you go and buy all kind of food stuff, and we keep a suitcase packed all the time, so we don't need to go and panic buy. We keep a suitcase packed for the hurricane season. So as I was thinking about this, it... it, it struck me when this virus is coming to to our shores uh, it was a long ways off but i became anxious like if we're preparing for hurricane we're praying for the unknown we're preparing for the unseen we have no idea what's going to happen if the hurricane will hit or if it will miss us we have no idea what's going to happen um, so i became anxious about covid19 and I went before the Lord and remembered the scripture, which is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says, Be careful or be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So here I am, man of God, minister, and I'm anxious about, of course I'm not telling anybody about this because it doesn't look good on me. 
But the truth is, I became anxious. And I, I went before the Lord and I, I, I confessed to the Lord that I had become anxious. Now, here's the problem. Anxiety is the absence of faith. Fear is the absence of faith. So if we become anxious or we become fearful, then we are truly not trusting the Lord. And when I went before the Lord, I didn't just say, God, I've become anxious, help me. I said to the Lord, Lord, I have sinned against you by not trusting you. See, the Bible says that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if I become fearful, if I become anxious, then I'm sinning. Now, some will not agree with this, but that's been my experience. So I went to the Lord and I said, I'm confessing this anxiety to you as sin. Not just anxiety, it is sin. I am not trusting you and I need to trust you. So forgive me for this and please allow me to get rid of this anxiety. And the Lord took it from me. By the time the COVID-19 virus got here, I'm good. I heard one preacher talking the other day and I like this and I'll share it with you. He said, look, he said, if COVID-19 passes me by, then I'll give God thanks for sparing me. If COVID-19 infects me, then I will trust God to carry me through. He said, and if COVID-19 kills me, well, I'm going to go to be with Jesus. So I think that's pretty good. Um, however I look at it, we win. So if we get speared, we can thank God for sparing us. If we get infected, we can trust God to take us through. And if we die, we will go to be with the Lord. I can't think of anything better than that right now. So if you become fearful, you need to go to the Lord and say, God, I'm sinning. I'm not trusting you. And I want to take this fear, take this anxiety out of me and help me to truly trust you that whatever happens, you are with me. You will never leave me. You'll never forsake me. You have my back and everything is going to be all right. Unfortunately, there's some people who can't say that because they have no relationship with the Lord. They're not Christians. They're not children of God. They're part of God's creation, but they have no active relationship with the Lord. And in this short video, look, if you if you are not uh, in a right relationship with the Lord, you know that you're living in sin, you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, take a few moments and, and reflect on the little things I've shared with you in this very short message. And, and open your heart to God and say, God, look, I realize I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me for my sins. I want to open my life and invite you to come in. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Become a Christian. Give your life to Jesus Christ and serve Him. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. You may not understand that, but you will in the days that follow. But give your life to the Lord. Serve Him. Live for Him. Those of us who are Christian, if you become anxious and fearful, ask the Lord to forgive you for it. Ask the Lord to take it from you. Confess it as sin and be delivered from it in the name of Jesus Christ. And you get there and you just trust God that everything is going to be all right because it is going to be all right. Regardless of what happens to us as Christians, it is going to be all right because we have made our calling and election sure. We know where we're going. Everything is going to be good with us. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. If our hearts are tuned with God, if our minds are filled with God's thoughts, here's what I need to say to you. Too much COVID-19 news is not doing you any good. Make sure you take time every day to focus your heart, focus your thoughts on the Lord Jesus Christ. He will then keep you in perfect peace. All right, so in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests remain known unto God. And the next verse says, And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. My heart is good today because my mind is on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm trusting in Him, and you can have the same peace, the same comfort, the same uh, rest if you will put your faith and your confidence in the Lord and what the Lord can do for you. So be encouraged, be challenged. Again, this is the end of my 15-minute message. Look for me on Good Friday 
uh, Facebook Live or watch party, somewhere along those lines. And I want to share a full message with you, practical, spiritual, that will be a blessing to you. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay under the blood. Catch you later.